What is going on guys? Andy Gabs back for another video and as you could probably tell this is kind of a part two I guess to my initial uh, why you should support Brian Barcheck video. I had a lot of questions on that last video that I want to address as well as a lot of things that I didn't say in that video that I wanted to say in another one. So that's essentially what this video is going to be, uh, addressing some stuff from the previous video and some stuff that I didn't address that I should have or that I guess has happened since then, or not all, everything has happened since then, but you guys will get what I mean as we go. So I'll start off, this video is monetized. Uh, any money that I make from this video, I'm going to donate it directly to US Arc. So that's why the video is monetized. The last one did quite well, so I figured if I'm gonna make the video, maybe it'll do as good as the last one. Might as well donate some money to a good cause. Uh, so all the money from this video is gonna go to US Arc. But let's get started into the actual nitty gritty. I'd say the most commented thing on the last video was people asking about the Leopard Gecko video um, where Lori says that Brian would kill anything that he takes care of. So, first of all, uh, I actually have that video pulled up on my laptop right now. I'm not going to play anything from it just because the video is um, it's four and a half minutes long and it, I don't want to play the whole video. But number one, that video came out on September 28th, 2008, so ten and a half years ago. Uh, the video is going to be linked in the description below, it'll be the very first link. So if you want to go and watch that video, you are welcome to. Uh, I challenge you, definitely watch it till the end. Uh, it's only a four and a half minute video. You can tell that it was a, a scripted video. It was kind of recorded as a bit. Um, if you know what a bit is, it's basically a scripted part of a video or a scripted video that's kind of pre-planned, right? Like usually when you vlog, you're vlogging whatever you're doing, so it's not like a pre-planned thing. Like you might have an idea of what you're going to do, but you don't have it scripted out. A uh, bit is something that's scripted out, and it was scripted out and filmed as a joke. And you can tell that if you watch to the to the last bit of the video, Brian says something like, no, I think that went really well. I think that went great. No, that was good. No, I think she took it well. I think that it's going to be good. I'm excited about this project. Which, based on the video, you can tell it's just a big joke, and he's definitely not serious at all. Uh, so again, that video will be linked in the description. That was... The biggest comment I got was that, oh my god, but Lori said this about Brian, blah blah blah. Like, yes, she said it. It was a joke. Kelsey says stuff about me all the time. It's a joke. Y'all gotta learn when to take a joke and when to realize something is a joke. But that's what I was talking about initially with the other channel uh, cherry-picking footage. She took the one, you know, 20, 30 second clip out of that video that makes it seem like Lori is, you know, trashing Brian and tearing him down, when realistically she wasn't. It was all filmed as a big, huge joke. Uh, so that was the first thing that I wanted to talk about. The next thing, people were commenting, well, Lori doesn't even like Brian. How do you know that? From how she acts in the video, Lori is a very stern person. Uh, we'll, we'll say that. She's not a mean person. She definitely loves Brian, and Brian definitely loves her. I don't even know why you guys were trying to bring that up, based on an almost 11-year-old video. No. This kind of goes hand in hand with each other. This is two things about me, not as much about Brian, but uh, I had a couple people saying that I was deleting comments on that video, the my last Brian video. So I think I deleted a total of five comments. Yes, ooh, I admitted, I deleted comments. Uh, in each one of those comments, someone called me uh, like an effing C word. I'm not gonna say that, but a, a bleep and bleep. I, I think you can probably figure out what that means. Or they like degraded me as a person, right? So yes, I'm gonna delete your comment if you call me a bleep and bleep, or you call me a PU dollar sign dollar sign Y and that's it. Like your comment's not relevant, it doesn't have any purpose. Um, so yes, I'm going to delete those. But someone said that I was deleting every negative comment. You can go through and look. If someone leaves me an intelligently written comment, I'm going to reply. That video has 1,665 comments. I would say almost 800 of those are for me. I did my best to reply to every single comment. Uh, I might have missed some here and there, but that's because I couldn't really keep up with responding with every single comment. Um, the video got, you know, 42,000 views. It was hard for me to respond to everyone, but I tried. I legitimately tried to respond to everyone that you know, wrote an intelligently written comment and that wasn't just rude off the bat. If you're rude off the bat, you're not going to get a response from me. And that's pretty much what Brian says too, going into that. If you're rude to him or you attack him or you try to, you know, degrade him as a human off the bat, why would he want to respond and talk to you? 
that pretty much goes for everyone and all the people that back him up too, me included. If someone's rude to your best friend, are you gonna try to, you know, talk to them and just talk them down? No, you're more than likely just gonna ignore it or do something else that's, I mean, that you can't really do on YouTube, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, another comment that Brian gets all the time is, you know, he buys all these animals, but what's he gonna do when they get big? You know, he's not gonna have any room in the reptarium and oh my God, and blah, blah, blah. What people don't realize is he's a business, right? So as a business expands and gets bigger, and in this case, we're talking about animals getting bigger, he can upgrade to a bigger location. He can make the reptarium bigger with bigger enclosures. He's proven that he is building bigger enclosures from BHB to the reptarium. That was one of the points of BHB and the reptarium was to make bigger enclosures and better enclosures and enclosures more suited for the animals. So, you know, as salt gets bigger, pepper gets bigger, night fury gets bigger, the all black retic, as Perdita gets bigger, yes, he's going to need a bigger facility. He is well aware of that. And we've actually talked about that before, you know, him opening up reptariums in different locations. I don't know where exactly they're gonna be, but yes, eventually he is going to need bigger enclosures and he's well aware of that. He's pretty aware of the fact that reticulated pythons are gonna get bigger than the enclosures he has now, right? So he knows, don't worry about it. He's going to get either you know a bigger facility or expand the facility that he's in now. Keep in mind, he owns the building next door. Both of those buildings have basements. So square footage wise, I would say he has four times the square footage of the Reptarium if he were to just make the Reptarium itself bigger and not branch into a different location. So that's where the animals will go when they get bigger. He's well aware, like I said, that the animals get bigger, animals do grow, everyone knows that. Uh, especially something like an alligator or a retic, they're gonna get big. He's aware and he's planning for that in the future, but there is time before that happens that he can move stuff around in the Reptarium to make the animals more suited for the environment they need. If that makes sense, I think it does. So some people have been asking about like specific animals and where they are. And you know, they haven't been in the vlog in a while. If I had to guess, I would say the Reptarium has maybe the 100, 150 animals, maybe? I don't really remember. I haven't been there for a while. You know, it's been like four or five months since the last time that I went. So no, you're not gonna see every animal in every single video. And I understand people are commenting and asking about certain animals that, you know, that they might just want to see, you know, it could be their favorite animal or they could think something happened to the specific animal. He reads most of your comments, but he doesn't get a chance to read and reply to every single comment. Keep in mind, so I sent Brian Andy the uh, New Guinea tree dragon, I wanna say two or three months ago, and Andy has been in the vlog twice. The day that I got him, and then maybe three-ish weeks ago, did I think Andy died? No. He's been highlighting other animals, and now that it's the breeding season and he's getting eggs, he's gonna be highlighting the eggs and things like that a lot. I don't think that the animal died or is sick just because he's not showing it. I know that he has so many other things that he wants to show, and you guys gotta think about content. He's gotta switch up the content every now and then, right? Just showing the same animals, the same ambassador animals, or the same, you know, whatever's over and over again is gonna get boring to most viewers. Not to everyone, and I get that. Um, but that's why, you know, some vlogs he does Reptarium, some vlogs he does BHB, some vlogs he does egg pulling, and then he kind of rotates it, if you notice it, so it's not just one thing that gets stagnant over a course of time. Uh, it stays interesting, it keeps people engaged, and as a YouTuber, that's what you want, right? You want people to be engaged, you want people to want to watch your content. If my videos were just me sitting in front of the camera every single video talking to you guys, some people would like that, but I don't think the majority of you would, right? Because you look at me as a, a vlogger and someone that does, you know, all kinds of different stuff. My channel doesn't really have one theme, I guess, because I do all kinds of different stuff. But if I just stuck to, say, just car show videos and I just showed you the same 10 cars over and over again in every single video, it would get kind of boring. Right, so that's what he's trying to do. Just because an animal hasn't been in the vlog doesn't mean it's not gonna be in 20 vlogs from now. It doesn't mean that it's sick, it doesn't mean that it died. It just means that he's trying to switch up the content and show something a little bit different. That doesn't mean that an animal is sick. I cannot stress that enough. It does not mean that the animal is sick or dead just because it hasn't been in the vlog. All right, next up, a uh, comment that I've seen a lot is that Brian hoards animals, that he hoards animals and that he buys too many and he impulse buys. And no, the Reptarium is a business. It is a zoo open to the public. BHB is a business where Brian breeds animals to produce more animals. There's a difference between someone that keeps animals at their home and buys a thousand animals and has you know another job that they have to do and then take care of their animals. 
It's different when you own a business and the business is animals. That's, that's the difference between hoarding and running a business. If you're buying something to improve the business, like say a pair of alligators, one's albino and one's melanistic, and it's the only place in the world where you can see an albino and a melanistic alligator right next to each other, that's something that's gonna bring business through the door and is a good business decision. So it's not hoarding when you're trying to buy something that's gonna make your business better, if that makes sense. Right, he's, he's getting these different animals to make his reptile zoo unique. So he wants to have cool stuff that you know you guys wanna go and see. And that kinda leads me into my next point, or my next, yeah, point, I guess. People that go to see the reptarium, and I touched on this in the last video, people that go and see the reptarium never have negative comments about the reptarium. People that go to BHB never have negative comments about BHB. So it's just people that haven't gone, or people that speculate online, or people that just hear stuff and assume that it's true, right? In the age of the internet, in the age of headlines, people see something and instantly assume that it's true. And in Brian's case, it's not. And as I told you guys in the last video, you know, I've been there, I've seen it. I've seen the cleanliness, I've seen how the animals look, I've seen how the animals are treated, I've seen the compassion that he has for the animals, I've seen the compassion that Bruce and Kelsey and Andrea and Noah and Lori and all of them have for the actual animals themselves and how much they want to take care of the animals. It's mind blowing and it's so much different compared to other places that I've been. That's kind of what I don't understand. Like I don't get how you cannot go somewhere but assume all these things about it that you've only seen online. You know, anyone that goes there loves it. Like you can read the reviews for it. It's rated 4.9 stars by Google. 4.9 stars at 273 reviews, right? If it was dirty and disgusting and all the animals were dying or dead, it would not be rated 4.9 stars. It wouldn't. It would have animal control plaints and, you know, health code violations, I guess. I don't really know how you report that. But there would be poor reviews about it. I don't even think there's a single one or two star review about the Reptarian because everyone that goes there loves it and has such a good time. Uh, you know, I just, I don't get how people can say that. All I want people to do, you know, the, the reason I'm making these videos is I want you to make an informed decision. I want you to do the research, go look at it in person and see what it's like and truly experience it. Truly go experience the Reptarium and experience BHB and see what it's like. See how clean it is and see the compassion and the passion, the compassion and the passion that everyone has for the animals. They truly do love them and it's like they're a part of their family. Next up, I wanted to talk about, so I do have my laptop right here. If you guys see me looking over here, it's because I made a list of everything that I wanted to talk about. Uh, if I don't make a list, I won't remember. Uh, why does everyone hear something about Brian and assume that it's true? And I kind of just talked about that in the last point. But why does everyone keep their breeder reptiles the same, or almost everyone, right? There is some people that are small breeders, or even bigger breeders, that do keep their animals a different way than Brian, but for the most part, everyone keeps their animals the same exact way, you know, tub setups with a water bowl, no hides, because again, the tub acts as a hide. But why is it that Brian is the only one that gets kind of shit on for that? Uh, a lot of people are gonna say, you know, it's because he's in the public eye, because he's the biggest reptile YouTuber, and I do kind of agree with that, but at the same time, there's plenty of other breeders that are reptile YouTubers, and they might not have as big of an audience, but they still have an audience, and no one attacks them. Everyone just goes after Brian like he invented the standard for reptile keeping. Oh, while I'm on that, he invented the standard for reptile keeping. Everyone said just because it's industry standard doesn't mean that it's right, and I agree with that. I do agree, not specifically for this case, but I agree that just because something is industry standard doesn't mean that it's right. So what can we do to change that? Well, we can open up the conversation, right? What does Brian want to have at the end of June, May? Uh, he wants to have like a, a, a panel talking about how we can better the industry and how we can, you know, get away from, you know, plain tubs if that's the right thing to do and go to something more enrichment in a tub if people agree that that's the right thing to do. But in that video, Everyone like attacked him and said that he was talking crap about all the people that use tubs and, like if you watch the video He says like almost verbatim. I'm not trashing anyone that uses tubs And I have to be careful with how I express myself because I don't want to throw anyone under the bus I don't want to tell people that do keep snake racks Which are tens of thousands of people around the world that they're doing something wrong And why would he be trashing anyone that uses tubs because he uses tubs he might have said that he wasn't as happy you know, opening a tub as he used to be, but he still uses them. So, he, like, that's that's one of the things that I don't get. Like, he says one thing, and people just twist it and transfer it to be something that's completely different. 
You know what I mean? And I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I, I just, I don't understand why that is. Coming in, oh, so another thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, people said that just because, you know, I'm his friend that my opinion is going to be skewed about him and I would never say that he's doing anything wrong. I'm telling you for a fact, if you know me as a person, which most of you do not, you know me from behind the screen, you know what I want to show you. If you ask anyone in person what I'm like about animals, if I see something that's wrong, whether it's my friend, my mom, you know, my dad, my brother, oh, I don't have a brother, but if I had a brother, Kelsey's brother, or Kelsey, that they're intentionally hurting an animal, I would 100% step in and do something about it. I don't care if you're my friend, if I see that you are doing something that is neglecting animals and putting animals in danger, I would 100% do something about it. But every time I've been to Bryant's, I haven't seen that. Everything is happy and healthy that I've seen. And if something is sick, right, because he does have thousands of animals, things are gonna get sick, he does something about it. He talks to the vet, he gets medication for it. He properly quarantines it. Sorry guys, my memory card got full. I had to go and delete some stuff. But as I was saying, just because things get sick and die doesn't mean you're improperly caring for your animals or that, you know, something is wrong with your animals, right? It's just, it's, it's nature, it's the way of life. And that's just kind of how things go. You know, that's unfortunate that animals have to pass away, right? No one wants their animals or their pets to die. And I promise you, Brian doesn't want his stuff to die. And when anything dies, it definitely hurts him. But it, it does happen. It doesn't mean that he's a bad person, that is a bad animal keeper. That's pretty much all I got for this video. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know it was a little bit different than the last one, but I did just want to address these things and talk about them. So I hope this helped clear things up. If you guys have questions, please type them in the comments down below. Be respectful, be courteous, and I will be courteous and respectful back to you. If you are an a-hole off the bat, then I'm probably gonna be an a-hole back, right? That's, that's just how I am. I'm not gonna apologize for that. I'm not gonna be super nice to you and cuddly when you're a jerk to me off the bat. That's not how that works. Please go ahead, subscribe. If you, if you would, I would appreciate it. Like this video, drop a comment down below, like I said. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video. My mom's here, so maybe we'll do some sort of food taste test or something like that. If you have ideas for that, comment down below. Um, but thank you guys. Peace.